Welcome to part two of the tutorial for Sparkster. Stage two on normal mode. And yeah, I'll try to explain some of the uh, finer details that might get lost when watching the video. I think it helps a little bit. And some might find it a little bit more entertaining than watching the video with just the, uh, the sounds of the game. So I offer both versions always the, uh, you know, with the full music and sound effects and then the version with no sound effects except my voice. I don't know, I really know how to have the sound effects with my voice without having my voice kind of muffled and hard to make out. So I, I just try to, you know, keep it based on a tutorial for people who just, you know, want to try to beat the game and want to understand better what's going on in the videos. It's not always clear exactly what, you know, pattern or technique is being used. Like I said, some games are so basic that, you know, there's I don't find the need to, to do a tutorial on them, but I do it on a lot of them now. But yeah, this level is a little bit of a maze. You have to go in the side you have to go inside certain uh, mouths. These little fish mouths here. You gotta go inside certain ones. If you go inside the wrong one, it can send you back to part of the level. So you just gotta kinda you know, follow the path that I use. And eventually you're gonna learn it anyway because it's gonna send you back. And um, here I get a, a one-up from the roulette, which you activate by collecting 10 gems. You know, you'll activate a roulette. And on rare occasion, you will get a one-up from it. It may it'll drop down from the sky. Here I just kind of just bust through. Not much technique was used there. I mean, you can take a good amount of damage in this game. So once you know the levels, you know, you don't have to always worry too much about that. You can use the railings if you want. And then here at the end, there's no other fish head to go in it from this point. So you just... You'll see my lives deplete when I go through the fish heads if you pay close attention. That's because I edited out the deaths and I edited them out at the fish heads. So that it was a clean edit. But, you know, I did die a number of times even on the successful attempt. So, you know, sometimes it's a little tricky if you don't know exactly what to do. Here you can use the spin attack by spinning in place, just hitting C without a direction, and you'll be invincible to the ball for like a second, and the ball will go through you. So if you need to avoid that ball, that's one of the best ways to do it. So yeah, you go into this mouth here, and this part can be a little tricky. I like to dash across there, land on that platform. I accidentally, you know, zipped back, which I ended up taking some damage there. And then I sloppily fall down through all this bullshit. I've done it much more cleaner than this, but you know this this run ended up getting sloppy. But it, it was what you know it was what ended up working. So whatever works gets left in the video. So yeah, then you take this platform. You know, use your sword to take these assholes out. Maybe get the gems for the roulette. And yeah, you want to shoot up diagonally left like that. Don't go in that fish head. And don't go on those spikes. You're going to wait up here for the platform to come down. Don't do exactly what I did. You see, I'm barely alive right now. And the reason I say shoot up diagonal right on that part, and you should probably avoid going for the apple unless you know how to angle yourself because you can end up fucking up a lot. And then just shoot diagonal at one of those spikes. Shoot left diagonal at one of those spikes. And you'll end up going in one of the fish's mouths. And either one is fine. Whichever one you go in, it seems to lead the same way. So just as long as you get in there, you're all right. You collect these gems, get your little roulette. I got a bomb. That wasn't very helpful, but it's worth trying. Now, I went down here accidentally, and then I realized that there was a bonus area up the other way. So that's why I'm going back. It's actually a very good bonus area because you get a one-up, and you get some health and other shit. So it's actually it's, it's worth going there. Unless you're doing a speed run or something, you know. And yeah, this diagonal dash wasn't working too well, so I just went straight up. Sometimes it's a little tricky with the dash, and you have to experiment a little bit if you don't know exactly what to do. Here, you just let yourself drown in the quicksand in this area. It'll suck you down, and you get a little bonus area. You'll get full health back. You'll get the flame sword and a one-up. And some other stuff that's not as useful, but... I think it's worth going in this area. So 
So yeah, this boss can be tricky if you don't have a strategy for it, but it's a very easy method. When he does that move with the straight fire, shoot into it because you're invincible during your dash. So you want to shoot into it, and hopefully when you ricochet back off, the fire will be gone. You want to time it so that that occurs. When he does this shit with the pillars that come up, I like to go up. I like to shoot up to that top railing and climb along it to dodge them. A lot of times, just being up there will be safe enough. But sometimes you'll have to move and dodge shit. But you don't have to be perfect with this. It's pretty fucking easy, you know. You know, you can get hit a lot. But you want to jump up to the height that he's at and then dash straight forward and hit him in the face when he's doing his. I wasn't even doing it that cleanly. I mean, you saw how sloppy I was playing. So you'll get your health back pretty much anyway. So as long as you survive. But yeah, now you have a little bit of platforming. Nothing hard at all. But there are some invisible platforms that can appear and fuck you up when you're trying to dash. So I, I went all the way to the top here and dashed to the end until I hit that invisible platform, came down to here. And I usually, I, most of the time I wait for these platforms, I'll shoot up and land back down on here and I'll, I'll wait for most of the platforms. There is one part where I ended up doing a skip by shooting across which I'd recommend doing. I didn't even really know about it. See, I did that right diagonal and it skipped all that shit. That was kind of an accident. I didn't even know I could do that. But it worked. So yeah, this boss is easy. This is, this is an easy boss if you know what to do. You know, of course, you may want to use save and load states to practice some of these parts. That's what I did to learn the levels. I always get hit by that. I don't really know how to avoid that. Like, it seems like you always take a hit when the fight starts. Which it seems pretty fucking cheap, but I, there's probably a way around that. So yeah, basically you want to... I, I like to shoot diagonally up from the ground to hit him. And I just absorb the hits. And I just keep shooting diagonally up at him. And when he after he does this, whatever side he's on, go to the opposite side and the tail usually won't hit you. Sometimes if he's in the middle of the screen, you may just want to go straight up in the air and shoot straight up in the air to dodge. Like you did with the bombs falling down from the um, ceiling in the other boss fight. Yeah, so you see what side he's in. Go to the opposite side. Just wait. And then after you wait here, he's going to fall down very close to where you are. Shoot up diagonally, get in a free hit. See, like that. And that's pretty much it. Just keep shooting diagonally up at, at him whenever you can and kind of just absorbing some of the hits when he's on the ground. You can just take some hits. You can play it real sloppy as long as you have full life. So it's not too hard. And um, when I beat the other levels, I'll post up some more tutorials. So stay tuned.